The title is mostly accurate. Although I don't have Brave Browser on my computer or my laptop, I do have it on my phone. I reserve its use for private browsing that I wouldn't get from Safari. While Safari on iOS does support extensions, the Apple tax extends to third-party developers as well. The extension only provides basic ad blocking capabilities in the free version. Fortunately, I have my Raspberry Pi running Pi Hole to handle all of the trackers. On my PC, I primarily use Florp as my main browser, Thorium as my secondary browser for compatibility reasons, and I use LibreRule for extra private browsing. I don't use Brave Browser for 99% of my online activities. There's so, there's so many flies in the backyard. I began using Brave Browser back in 2018 when it wasn't based on Chromium and was built on the custom fork of Electron called Muon. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I first heard about Brave Browser through a promotion by Bart Baker, a a former YouTuber who created parodies of popular music videos. Before he stopped making them and moved over to Chinese TikTok, he ran a few promotions for the browser as part of Brave's referral program. I was impressed by its speed compared to Chrome and appreciated its clean interface. The only drawback at the time was I couldn't run extensions, but Brave quote unquote fixed this issue in 2019 when they switched their engine over to Chromium anyways. Let's start off by addressing the obvious elephant in the room, Brave's involvement with cryptocurrency. This began when the company sought to solve a problem caused by its ad blocking features. When you block ads online, it reduces ad impressions and hence revenue for hosts, which they need to maintain servers and operations. Brave responded by creating a cryptocurrency called the Basic Attention Token, or BAT for short allowing users to compensate creators when viewing their pages. How do you get this currency, you may ask? Well, by viewing privacy-respecting ads, of course. Okay, I thought the whole point of me downloading this browser was to get away from advertising, but we'll touch up on that later. To find out if a creator does accept BAT, you can look for the verified badge, indicated by a blue check mark next to the rewards icon. According to Brave's website, to become a verified creator, you must create an account for one of these three services. There is another method if you just simply want the check mark, but if you want to get paid, you need to sign up for one of these services. All three services need you to complete KYC verification, which stands for Know Your Customer. For reference, Google's AdSense system requires creators to provide their legal name, physical address, phone number, email address, and wire transfer or EFT information for banking purposes. This all sounds like pretty standard information. Now let's take a look at the KYC policies for these three services. Since we are a creator looking to make revenue from online content, we'll assume we're making business accounts. For Uphold, you need legal name, phone number, email address, date of birth, social security number, physical address, photo ID, a photo selfie, proof of address, company name, purpose of account, a certification of good standing, monthly activity, and bank account information. When it comes to their quality of service, I've noticed several support threads from the past expressing frustration about being stuck in verification limbo. Some users have even reported allegedly being asked for additional information during the verification process. It appears that a general consensus among many Brave users is that Uphold is not worth the risk of getting ownership over your bat. Alright, let's take a look at our next Next option, Gemini. For Gemini, you need legal name, email address, phone number, date of birth, social security number, physical address, photo ID, a mobile number for two-factor authentication, and your banking information. Compared to Uphold, Gemini seems slightly more manageable, but it has its own set of issues. Gemini has faced significant maintenance problems and was embroiled in a legal dispute with government authorities. Moreover, the Brave Rewards integration only works for users residing in the United States. Gemini doesn't appear to be a great option either. 
As for Bitflyer, I won't list the requirements as Brave's integration is exclusive to Japanese users, but a lot of the requirements they ask for are similar to both Uphold and Gemini. The main point I'm making is that as a creator, the requirements to use these services and cash out BAT from Brave users demand far more personal information than traditional ad services. This feels like a step backward for privacy. I don't like Google and how much data they collect on me. I understand that money laundering is a real concern and there needs to be measures put into place, but I believe creators should not have to provide a significant amount of their personal information to some random exchange just so they can recoup some of their lost ad revenue. In my opinion, these exchanges undermine the very idea of cryptocurrency and its purpose, which is privacy, anonymity, and decentralization. Along with the collapse of FTX, lawsuits against other major crypto exchanges, and the way that plenty of influencers ran pump and dump schemes with shit coins to scam their fans, this has dealt major blows to the reputation of cryptocurrency and reducing the currency's value, leading to creators earning less money from Brave Rewards. Also, here's the thing. Why not use fiat currency instead of crypto? Paying creators in their localized currency would eliminate the need for these onerous KYC requirements. Oh wait, you'll basically just be reinventing the wheel. I believe Brave Rewards conceptually falls apart because it essentially says, we'll fix the problems that result from us blocking your ads by reintroducing advertising in our own way. Mozilla's recent attempt to do something similar sparked controversy because having tailored advertising that preserves privacy is an oxymoron. These so-called privacy-preserving methods only make linking data to individuals more complicated, but services and data brokers will eventually figure it out and we'll be back to square one. Brave's approach may seem innovative and cool due to its use of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, but ironically, it takes away more privacy for creators and users than traditional advertising measures. But I suppose this is all irrelevant, as Brave Rewards is optional and you can opt out if you don't like it. Jesus Christ. If you disregard the other areas where cryptocurrency is present, such as the occasional crypto ad on the new tab page or crypto information on the dashboard, what other reasons remain for me not using Brave? I'm aware of the more political aspects, but I won't go into them to avoid sparking a heated discussion in the comments. Alongside Brave Rewards, there are other features packed into the browser that do seem unnecessary. Again, most of these features are opt out, but the feature creep does start to resemble Firefox's changes over the past decade, which slowly led people to abandon the browser. Brave still offers a good default experience, but these additions do start to have a noticeable impact. All right, enough rambling. Let me explain my last draw on what got me to stop using Brave. In 2019, Brave switched its browser engine from Muon to Chromium, likely done to reduce burden of maintaining a large code base on their smaller development team. However, this shift contributed to fewer competing browser engines in the market which is detrimental to open web standards that ensure that the web remains decentralized and ensures equal ground for everybody. Listen, I get it. Creating and maintaining a web browser is one of, if not the hardest projects to take on as a software developer. But without competition, whoever maintains the de facto engine gets to write all of the web standards, forcing browsers to either comply or put in a ton more effort deviating from upstream. This is one of the primary reasons why Internet Explorer was widely hated and why open standards were created in the first place. To give them credit, Brave does take a stance against Google's privacy invasive practices through Chromium. Brave plans to continue manifest v2 support as normal support has ended and enterprise support will end next year. They block most of the trackers built into Chromium 
including notable examples like federated learning of cohorts, web environment integrity, and Google's privacy sandbox. But it seems like unless the policy revolves around user privacy, Brave will happily look the other way. In early 2022, a new image format called JPEG XL emerged, touted as the long-awaited successor to the ubiquitous JPEG format. JPEG XL boasted improved compression, enhanced image quality, and additional features that align with our current and future technological needs. As it entered testing phases in various browsers, excitement grew around its potential adoption. But by the end of 2022, the Chromium team unexpectedly announced that they would not be incorporating JPEG XL into their browser. The reasons they gave seemed to suggest a preference for Google's in-house format, AVIF. I would love to go more in depth about this whole controversy, but doing so would need a whole separate video. If you would like to see me make a video dedicated to JPEG XL, please write a comment down below and let me know because I would be happy to explore this situation further. Before Chromium removed JPEG XL support, someone asked the Brave team if they would once again stand up to Google and fully incorporate JPEG XL into their browser. Unfortunately, Brave decided to follow in the footsteps of Google and chose not to do it. I know this sounds stupid, but killing JPEG XL support was what got me searching for other browsers. It is how I first heard of Thorium before other YouTubers made videos on it. It is how I found out about Florp, the browser I now use today. Now, I didn't switch just because of an image format. Trust me, I'm not delusional. The browser came with other amazing features like vertical tabs, which trust me, once you get used to vertical tabs, you will not want to go back. A customizable sidebar that allows me to open up my most frequently used websites on the side. But most importantly, it's based on Firefox instead of Chromium. I didn't abandon Brave simply out of defiance, but because I found a browser that better suited my preferences. My decision was final and I began migrating away from the Brave browser in favor of a browser that offered features that I truly enjoyed. I'm not opposed to people using Brave. It's a great browser with built-in ad blocking and excellent privacy features out of the box. I understand why many people choose it as their daily driver. The company also deserves credit for some of its other products such as Brave Search, which provides an alternative not only to Google, but even search engines like DuckDuckGo. But at the same time, the company does seem to be repeating some of the same mistakes that garnered controversy for Mozilla, including pushing features that don't resonate with the browser's target audience or are just straight up worst versions of their standalone competitors. I just hope that Brave Browser will not follow the same fate as Mozilla and start making deals with the devil. But what do you guys think? Do you use Brave Browser? Do you like using the browser? I'd like to hear what you guys think about the video down in the comment section. This is Game Webcam, and take care.